into a right there. It did him no good. Dan Mulally's making a game effort. Yes, he is. The only thing that I've noticed is he's there are common principles and patterns in all martial arts that cross the boundaries of tradition and style. In our Aikido, we should develop some understanding of these common threads and weave them into our practice. The situation we're going to study today is identical to this combination thrown by Sa'ad to finish the previously undefeated Mawali late in round four of this fight from 1980. Watch how Sa'ad attacks with a jab-cross combination, forcing Mawali to protect his head then splitting his guard with a powerful uppercut for the knockout. The jab, a right hand that set up that uppercut, left hook, came straight up the middle. That's it right there. See how far the neck, the head goes back. Skekomi means to exploit a weakness, to take advantage of an opening. And it's very much like the combination we just watched from Sa'ad. A two-strike combination followed by an attack coming from below straight up the middle. Uppercuts are extremely powerful, but they also leave your side open, so they need to be set up carefully and prudently. You would never lead with an uppercut. I'll perform that same boxing combination using a right lead to correlate with the skekomi kata. In standard boxing, you'd have your front toe pointed in a little, but if your knee is a potential target, it's better to keep it pointed forward. This is a 1-2-5 combination. The first two strikes attack high, causing the opponent to defend high. Then we split their guard and come in straight up the middle. Every strike sets up the next one. Now we'll look at this through more of a Kempo style lens. I open with a cross block back fist combination, then a hammer fist to the temple. Sweep the opponent's arm down to the right and follow with the double strike combination, splitting their guard with the final strike correlating to Koregaishi. Now we'll relate that to Skekomi. You can explore similar studies based on Wing Chun, Kali, or other striking arts. Aikido is a way of responding to violence rather than creating it. But this immediately poses a dilemma because if you're unable to impose physical and psychological pressure on your opponent, it's very unlikely you'll be able to control them in a standing situation. That's why a temi is absolutely essential. You can't just go up to an opponent and throw a wrist lock on them. That only works in movies. Even if you manage to grab their wrist, it doesn't usually have the effect that you might think it does. The typical reaction is to fold inward, suck up the pain for a moment, and punch you in the head with the free hand. Most techniques that we think of as Aikido techniques are attenuated, potentially less damaging versions of other throws and strikes. Koragaishi is an attenuated version of throws like Tayotoshi, Ogoshi, or Seonagi, or of strikes like hooks and uppercuts. The elements of these techniques are at the core of effectively implementing Koragaishi. Kurogaishi just provides a way to scale down the severity of your response, but the timing, movement, position, and rhythm of these strikes and throws must be implicit within your Kurogaishi. Now we'll continue with our study of Skekomi. It is essentially two cuts followed by a thrust up the center line. This style of Chiburi, where you flip the sword, is derived from Katori Shinto Ryu. The first cut is to the opponent's left temple. As they step back and raise their sword, we step forward and strike to the right side of their body and follow with a thrust to the body. According to Nisho Sensei, this way of thrusting slightly upward derives from a time when it would be necessary to thrust up under a plate of body armor that would be protecting the opponent's throat or chest. We can observe this form a couple of times before we touch on some details.
As we draw, we keep our body inside the sword. Then we draw our left foot behind to provide the power for the cut to the temple. Add the left hand and raise the sword straight up and step to the left, cutting kesa. Then step your right foot forward and thrust. Bring your left foot up next to your right as you withdraw the sword. Flip the sword over 360 degrees, loosening your left hand slightly as your right hand makes a movement like you're starting a lawnmower. Don't let your wrist flop over like this when you do this cut. Be sure your forearm is in good alignment to support the impact of the cut. Here the sword is doing nothing to protect me. If it were hit, it would smack me in the face. Shift your body to the right, staying inside the sword. If the sword were hit, it would travel around my head and continue on to the next strike. After the second strike, I make a small circle to pass under the opponent's elbow before the thrust. Note how I match the timing of drawing my left foot behind to add power to the first cut. Now we'll build this kodagaishi in a different way. Starting with the standard nukisuke, we'll apply three basic kesagiri. This is the same general pattern of movement, the final cut correlating to kodagaishi. Now I'll include cuts that correlate to sweeping the opponent's arm as we pass to the left. You see this sweep clearly in the Aikido technique and also in our Kempo detail we did earlier. You can also see the uppercut just before I drop to my knee to execute the Kodagaishi by cutting across the opponent's legs. If the opponent wants to save their legs, they would take a forward rolling ukemi or a break fall over the sword at that point. The uppercut can either be toward the opponent's throat or under their left armpit. When I do this as a paired bokken exercise, I typically use the uppercut to control my opponent's sword by restraining their left raised arm. That allows me to drop to the side for the final cut without having their sword come down on me. Now we'll add a turn after the initial draw. You can see as we approach more closely the expression of our original Aikido technique that our movement becomes more flowing and natural. It also changes from a feeling of cutting the opponent to a feeling of controlling the space around us and defining a path toward mutual coexistence as an expression of the philosophy of Aikido. <laughs>